Hello everybody and welcome to a very, very special Laurie's Mechanical Marvels. For today is something quite momentous and very, very important to me is happening. Today, we're naming my Rustin 48. And it's, uh, it's not a particularly nice day in the middle of Suffolk today, at the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway. So, that's a bit disappointing, we're hoping for a nice day, but it has now stopped raining. Which means we've got to make this thing look presentable for a very special guest to come and do this renaming ceremony. So, uh, we better put their camera down, mate, and uh, get cleaning. First thing, let's just give it a wipe down and get rid of all of the, the wet so we can at least try and put some polish onto it. Because it has rained non-stop in Suffolk for about the last 24 hours. And the forecast yesterday was absolutely grim. Oh God, this rag. I have bought many of these to attempt to dry this thing off. Get rid of the cobwebs. Yeah, the forecast was in advance of this absolutely dire. And it's now just miserable rather than dire. So we're quite happy with miserable and not dire. And so, uh, yeah, I've got some nice polishy stuff and hopefully we'll make her look really pretty. Now, the colour of these things is meant to signify something. You're meant to use some on wheels, some on body, some on glass. Today they're just towels. Oh, if it stays dry, Kindred. Oh, it's, this is James again. You've seen him before. He, he pops up occasionally doing railway stuff. Can you get rid of the cobwebs down on the axle? I, I started. You started? <clears throat> what kind of excuses I started? I'm employing you to clean my engine. Yes, by employ, I mean begging you. <laughs> it pays rubbish. Yes. Me and Kindred gave it our best shots, but the weather wasn't kind to us, and after an hour of trying to dry and then clean the same spot over and over again, we decided the thing looked acceptable as it was, certainly much cleaner than it would ever have been in its surface life. And just in time too, because our special guest, Lady McAlpine, had just arrived. And she was here to rename my locomotive, which meant I had to give a short speech. Uh, uh, thank you very much everybody for coming and a special thank you to Lady McAlpine and to the guys of you who come from Forty Hill. Uh, we really appreciate you making the journey up here to see, well, this little thing. And uh, yeah, we're all very proud yes. of it. I I, you're frightening the life out of me. <laughs> I, uh, take a step forward. <laughs> Not, yeah. I'm panicking. Uh, I, I wanted a locomotive for quite a long time and I saw a Rustin 48 many years before I actually purchased this one and the idea was firmly stuck in my mind that this was the locomotive that I wanted to own and it's particularly important to all of us because a Rustin 48 was used in 1952 when the railway closed to take up the railway so it's a really nice little thing to have here because it's an appropriate locomotive and we're going to use it to rebuild our railway and make it longer and undo the damage done by one of its previous ones and so I kind of like the idea of it. I looked around and kept an eye out for another one of these things and they, they didn't come up. And uh, I was working on a job where I had a lot of free time. So rather than doing something constructive to help the job, I sat down and started trying to update a list that was 15 years out of date of where all the Rustin 48s were. And so I started with the one at the lowest number and started working my way through until I got to 294266. And I sent an email off to Forty Hill going, hello, I don't suppose you still have the Rustin 48, I'm doing a project trying to work out where they all are. Do you still have it? Does it work? If you don't have it, where's it gone? And I was with my friend James at the time when I got an email back from Sir William McAlpine. I was having a going, hello, oh. which read very much like, oh, thank you for your interest. I do still have the locomotive. Yes, it works. And uh, if you happen to know anybody during your research who would like to buy a Rustin 48, I'm looking to dispose of mine. <laughs> Now, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> this email I read about three times, just a short run around the table before handing the phone to James over there, who had to read it to me to explain exactly what this email said. So a, a short confession followed, and dear Sir William, thank you for getting contact. I must confess, the reason I have been doing this list is I really would quite like a Rustin 48. And so a date was set, and myself, Mr. Durrant over there, 
Leon and Nigel went down to see this little thing, being very excited. And so William welcomed us like old friends and it was a absolutely glorious day out, hearing lots of railway stories, history of things and just feeling very, very welcome. <coughs> the greatest achievement was we got this to fire up using Sir William's Land Rover as a battery pack. And it did go, and we got it running up and down at the track at Forty Hill. At the same time, Lady McAlpine was trying to host a reception for a wedding. <laughs> and we got rather scolded for running trains when the guests are trying to turn up driving along the track. So we very quickly, humbly, parked the diesel up and uh, started discussing a price which ended up with Sir William saying, well, you are a very nice lad, which I don't know how he got this impression. <laughs> he didn't know you very well. He, did, he certainly did not. And we shook hands. I walked back to the car where Mr Durrant, Neil and Nigel were, who asked how it went, and I said, I think I bought it. And they said, are you sure? And I said, no, we shook hands, but I really don't know what's happened. I had to send an email a few days later just to confirm what had happened, because I couldn't quite believe that I was going to buy this. So we did, we bought it and we bought it home and with a lot of effort from a lot of the volunteers here, we turned it around and restored it back to what it should have looked like when it was new-ish. Apparently the side should have been green. I've been recently contacted by someone who used to work with it who said it looks pretty good and I'll take that. <laughs> so I really hope that Sir William knew when he sold the locomotive, just how happy it made me. So he did, and um, when you think photos of her, when she was sort of done, he, I mean, he, he was suitably impressed because he did see those. Um, I have to say though, uh, the little Ruston did go once a year, she was red, and so Father Christmas would arrive at the, the uh, railway nativity at the end of the initiative, if Father Christmas would arrive, on the little red engine. So when Bill said, um, oh, I'm, I'm selling the little Ruston, I said, well, you can't do that. They said, well, why? We don't use it. I said, yes, we do. It's Father Christmas's <laughs> engine. <laughs> there was an email to this effect. <laughs> I, <laughs> which I, I was really quite cross. <laughs> which I did offer that it's more than welcome to visit for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think what you have to do is make sure that you do a Christmas thing and he has, she, you have to have Father Christmas on that. Pay attention <laughs> operations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought that would be very nice. But I was quite fond of her, but the rest of them didn't like her, so, you know, there we go. But she was in a sad state, I agree. It, it, it did a bit of love, but we, we put a lot of time and effort into it, yeah. and I'm in debt to she a lot of people here for <laughs> their work on it. We, we are very proud of it. There's, we were very lucky and very honoured to get asked to the Leyston Works Railway to open up uh, a new heritage railway. And it was a great honour to take what's effectively a useless diesel and trundle up and down in the public's eye and we were on the local news on uh, BBC and ITV and I was stood there with Mr Kindred looking at the thing at the end of the day and he turned to me and said you would have been really proud of this and we think that he probably would have liked the fact that this little engine opened up a brand new railway. Absolutely. And so uh, it was yeah and it was at the railway that uh, Syrophyte that he used to own used yeah. to work on so it was yeah. lovely to take an engine that he owned back to a place from an engine where he owned. Anyway, <laughs> beside the point. But I am absolutely flabbergasted every time I look at this thing and realise that it's my locomotive. <laughs> and the tie to Sir William is just the most amazing thing that I could have ever asked him. Because oh. he was a hero of mine growing up. And yeah. to have been able to meet with him and talk with him as a friend, it was just an absolute honour. And so I'd just like to say thank you very much to particularly Neil, to Nigel, for helping out and for looking after this mechanically, to Paul, uh, in the workshop whose workshop we took up for a very long time when it was being repainted <laughs> and whose workshop thanks to Neil and Nigel was coated with soot from the inside of this <laughs> which I still don't hear the end of and still not sure that I'm in Paul's good point and then a, a massive thank you to Mr Durrant for all of his help with the loco and bringing it up to this standard he has been um, yeah a very very good friend so um, without any further Waffle. Wasting of your time. <laughs> yeah, waffle, that's it. James? We would like to formally 
So rename the little Russian 48. <laughs> Thank you for Sir William McCall. to call it. Oh no, I'm so thrilled. I really am. We're pretty sure for size of locomotive to size of name we're onto a winner here. <laughs> like per, there's over a foot of locomotive per letter, well, letter per foot. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> we did play with the idea of having the, the old name on the side bit. There we go. Oh, good idea, <laughs> It's a useful lad, this one. Brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Coming up as well. So good. Brilliant. You've done an amazing job. We're so proud of it. He would have loved to have seen this. So um, what we'd like to invite you all to do now is we're going to fire the local up, attach you to our brake van and take you for a little trundle up and down the oh, Tuffy Light Railway. Aww. Which will be the first passenger train I believe she's ever pulled. So I don't think she moved passengers at Corley Hill. No, no, just for Christmas. No. So I believe this will, this will, <laughs> this, uh, this will be the first train, the first passenger train that she's ever pulled. So uh, I'm quite excited by this, it's a momentous occasion. <laughs> Hold it down.
Yeah. Well, it was quite funny because. <laughs> oh, it's just going to be a bit hand. No, when I when I first found her, mm. and she was down at the bottom at Forley, and I came back up and said to a couple of the lads, "There's a little red engine down there. Could we get it going for Father Christmas?" I think because um, something was, that was number thirty-one was having stuff done to it, and I didn't really want the big diesel. Mm. And so I said, "Could we put Father Christmas on on that little red engine?" Mm. Oh, she hasn't gone for years. So I said, well, um, you know, is it difficult to get her going? And it was quite funny because obviously they took it as a challenge. Yeah. So they got her going. And um, so, but I don't think she ever did more than for the Christmas. <laughs> so it's lovely to see her. She goes really well. Yes. So we use her, she's used a lot. They use her, we have a little wagon over there that she's used in permanent way. Right. And for any light shunting moves or track work or. Um, yeah. Trimming the hedges, that's what we use it for. It's, it's the works engine, it goes out. Like yeah. it turned up um, last weekend and it was out just chumping them out. In fact, when, we, when we finished here today, me and him have got a shunt to finish. Right. And so we got, we've got. we been told that we're doing a shunt with it, and that's fantastic. <laughs> and that it's, uh, oh, it's, just, it's a glorious little thing. Oh, I could not be more yeah. proud of it. <laughs> that's it guys this has been for me a absolutely huge huge occasion and it's been a real nice kind of closing chapter to the whole owning a locomotive to get it named after the gentleman who sold it to me it's it's just a lovely round bit and it's been so nice to have Lady McAlpine come up here today to know it's it honestly has been such an honor and well you saw earlier I, I have never been quite as proud I love this little thing so much and it's it's just been amazing. It really has to have people around and just enjoy and celebrate it. And to haul the first ever passenger train it's ever done, which was, that's quite an achievement. It's been a lovely day. And it's a shame about the weather, so it hasn't sparkled despite me and Joseph's best efforts. But uh, not the most exciting video, I know guys, but I hope you've enjoyed coming along and being part of the adventure. And we're just gonna shut it up now and go home. So if you've enjoyed watching this and you want to know a bit more about this, how about clicking up here for the collection video when we went and picked it up? Or how about clicking down here somewhere for the video where I actually review it so you can find out what this thing actually is. In the meantime, thank you very much guys and a massive thank you to Lady McAlpine for coming up and to the Mid-Suffolk Light Railway for allowing us to have this event. If you like what you've seen here, the uh, link to the Mid-Suffolk's website is in the description. See you later guys!